Nigeria's non-oil exports recorded for record for 2022 reached its highest since the establishment of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council 47 years ago. NAPC is established to promote the development and diversification of the country's export trade. At, uh, as the May 29 handing over to a new administration draws nearer, economists and stakeholders believe positive regulations in the non-oil export sector can deliver the country from fiscal deficit. But joining me via Zoom is the lead consultant and chief executive officer, 3T Impex Trade Academy, Dr. Bamidili Ayemibo. It's going to be helping us better understand what's responsible for this growth for this record, highest record since um, the establishment of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. It's good to have you join us on the program. Yeah, good afternoon. Well, let's start a conversation at this very interesting point where we see that the Nigerian Export Promotion Council generated a sum of $4.82 billion last year. What do you think is responsible for this commendable development? Um, you know, there have been a lot of initiative in Nigeria to grow the non-oil export space. Uh, we have the NEPC having what is called Export Survivor. Export for Survivor, actually. And they did the first major annual conference sometimes last year, I think around April. CBN also came up with the RT200 initiative. And all these as a result of the uh, challenges we are currently facing the economy with foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the surge we saw in the uh, growth of non-oil export volume, in terms of proceed received, is as a result of all this initiative. And coupled with the fact that a lot of importers who are having issues with forests are beginning to still need to grow their export, I mean to do exports to be able to generate foreign exchange for themselves. So, I mean, so many, I would say just NPC. NPC is doing a lot. CBN also is coming in. A number of other, the environment is forcing people to do the business. Because, I mean, it's becoming highly imperative given the challenges we are faced with FX in our, in our environment. A lot of people, of course, will talk about the challenges, which is what we see on major headlines all the time. We forget that we're actually making commendable progress in the non-oil sector. We're just focused on the oil money. But if, we, if you think about this, you know, considering the challenges and the tough business environment here in Nigeria, can we do better, really? I'm asking if we can do better than the, the figure we saw last year, this year. Considering the challenging business environment, considering the exports that's the, that, that we're getting from the non-oil sector. So I didn't get a question. I, I lost you a little bit. Yeah, I'm Your saying question. that most of the time, the headlines that we see is how difficult it is to do business in Nigeria and uh, the negative yeah. stories about the oil sector and the oil money and all that. We forget how much the non-oil export sector is doing for our economy. So I'm asking that if you take a look at what we have, that's the business environment here in Nigeria. Can we do better, you know, given uh, if we have the uh, right policies or the right leadership in place? We can be a lot, lot better. In fact, left to me, we shouldn't be celebrating that we are doing four billion. We shouldn't be celebrating that at all. Um, we can pat ourselves at the back that we tried at least better than before, but compared to what we are capable of doing, no, it's nowhere where we should be uh, uh, as a nation. So, so many issues that I am assuming we'll be able to talk about in the on the show today. But the fact is that we are not doing enough. We're not doing very well. Let me give an example. In Africa, so I don't want to go beyond Africa. In Africa, among the top economy, Nigeria, Algeria, South Africa, Morocco, Egypt, Nigeria has the largest population, but South Africa has more in terms of export volume. If you put oil and non-oil together, last year we did 67 billion. 
Out of which about four billion is non oil, the one you talk about. But South Africa did over 90. That's about 60 million country and, and population. So, so we're not doing given our size and given a lot of things we can do because of the opportunity available. So definitely there's so much uh, we're talking about later on that I think the NAND administration need to definitely consider so we can grow our non-oil export. So we're not doing well enough, but we can still put ourselves in the back at least we are not where we used to be. <laughs> well, let's still commend ourselves because, you know, most times we get to hear the bad stories first. But if you take a look at it, let's set an agenda for the incoming administration with regards to exports. What do you think are the low-hanging fruits or possible quick wings for them? Number one, I want to appeal. Even if CBN governor, we have to go, probably for political reason, they should retain his policies. He started a policy, RUT 200 FX, that is encouraging people to come into export. And I think that should be retained. In fact, I think the federal government should own it. It looked more like a CBN idea right now. It would be good if the federal government own it. I mean, I'm talking about the presidency now. You know, there is this thing around body language that you hear a lot about presidency body language. You know, when the president is going anywhere, and in every statement he made or speech he made regarding the economy, if he keep repeating a particular issue in a particular sector, I think the Afghan administration did a lot of that with agree, and we saw what happened in agree and what they were able to do. We need to do exactly the same in export. I think the new administration to take export as a declare a state of emergency in export. In fact, someone said we need a ministry of export development. Someone was, is that serious? So we have to grow non oil export. So we need to put export on the front burner. But why doing that, we need to grow our productive capacity, meaning we need to support all the businesses, particularly those that are adding value. Say, so look at this. Do, do you know that out of the top economy in Africa, Nigeria has the lowest number of exporters? Even Ghana has more exporter than Nigeria. Cote d'Ivoire has more exporter than Nigeria. Registered exporter. Nigeria is just about 3,000 plus and over 30,000 importer. But 3,000 plus exporters. Ghana, South Africa is over 40,000. Ghana is about 10,000. And Cote d'Ivoire is about 12,000. So we must grow the number of exporters. That means we must encourage export. And it has to be driven by policy. Till now, I'm not sure Nigeria have a very valid trade policy that is being driven by the government agency. So, for example, what do we really need to do or want to do in the export space? Number one, we need to decide. We need to decide on what we want to do with commodities. Why we cannot drop commodity export completely? We need to begin to incentivize more. CBN is doing something in that direction. For those that are adding value, to encourage value addition as much as possible. The outgoing administration did something in the non oil, in the agri space. De risking the agri sector. We need to de risk export. We need to ensure that banks are interested because if they fund, they are going to be incurring less risk because government is supporting with guarantee. To ensure that if bank is putting money in that space, the money is secured. So we can get more fund into that sector. So we need to de-risk the sector. We need to grow the number of exporters by putting a lot of incentive in place. Let me talk about the port. The outgoing administration did try to do a lot about documentation. Mm. CBN has worked with custom and a, a part of the process has been automated. Can the government, can the new administration put a, give a machine order? All the processes involved in export should be online. I open my NXP online. It's approved online. Custom do their review online. The inspection agent issue the document online. The shipping line, everything online. So that means I don't need to leave my office. 
and I can see the approval. If there are issues, I can see it. I can go and resolve it. And then ensuring that at the end of the day, clearing process is seamless. So we can get the good into the pot for the best to come to pick it up immediately. While, of course, trying to finalize whatever it is that is done about the issue of, I mean, we are having the road at the port. So there must be a lot of incentive to drive, to encourage exports. That's some pleading that whatever CBN is doing right now, particularly with incentive, the government should not just, the government should increase it and make it as efficient as possible. Let me give an example. There's an incentive that NEPC pay and have to be in the budget. Sometimes it takes a year, two years, three years before I get the grant from government. The one CBN is doing every quarter payment is made. Every quarter. You don't need to follow up. The document showing that you are supposed to with them. Every quarter it is done. That's encouraging a lot of people coming into this space. Mr. Doc, Mr. Bamdali, are you still with me? Yes, uh, yes, 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 I'm done. Okay, so I was Sorry. going to ask, you know, a lot of lot, a lot of times we, of course, we understand what the government should be doing at this time, which is creating a business-friendly environment, particularly for entrepreneurs. But if you take a look at, um, the question I like to ask is, are Nigerian exporters really ready? Because when you take a look at the issue of processing, packaging to low value of, uh, of low value of agriculture, well, produce in the international market, would you say they are ready to actually take their product outside? Because even for we, the market in here, sometimes we can't really trust these products. Um, you know, you're right, but not completely. The fact remains that a lot of finished good, value-added products are currently leaving Nigeria on a daily basis by road, by sea, and by air. What we need to do is to identify those products, people producing them, and see how to support them to expand what they are doing and bring more people into it. In terms of certification, NEPC did a lot upper year, two years ago and last year, to support a lot of organizations to get necessary certification to be able to get into the sector. So the government is doing a, a, a lot in that space. So, so to be able to ensure our product is acceptable, in terms of getting them to add value, that's where incentives come in. So if government is supporting and giving incentive to those that are adding value, it can encourage people to want to add value because they know if I add value, government is going to support me. I'm going to be able to get facility, to be able to get machinery and expand and add value. So I think the gov I think the people are ready. I think the people are ready. I think the government is not ready. That's why I said we need now. Let me say this. We need a head of NEPC that have access to the president. By virtue of being a minister or, or a special advisor to the president. So that he doesn't have a new an initiative. And then another agency is blocking it, and it doesn't have a way of solving it. Let me give you an example. Currently, the cost of freight from Nigeria is crazy. Compare freight from Nigeria to Benin, to Togo, to Ghana. It's making us to be uncompetitive when you are shipping by air. And NEPC has been trying to work with the stakeholders. In fact, at some point, I was asking them, your ministry and the other ministry are working for the same presidency. Why is it so difficult for you to be able to get them to cut down this cost that is making a lot of plane entry and that going back empty? If the NEPC head is able to have access to the president and discuss this issue with the president, and the president call in the fan and NACO and all the people at the airport, get them to do what they need to do. We need to grow exports. You want to, you, you are saying planes, you'll pay some outrageous bill. That is making them to prefer to go to Ghana. They are leaving Nigeria empty. They bring in the plane, the cargo plane. They literally leave Nigeria empty. And then the is doing all to be able to ensure they reduce that cost. This agency are not ready to reduce those costs. Because maybe the government gave them the target. So can we have to the presidents can talk to all of them and resolve this issue to encourage export? So in the bid to drive or generate revenue, maybe because they get them target, they are not hindering export. Because there's so much shipment we can do by air, but all that have been affected because of this issue.
Nigeria has Are the market. And an added advantage is the fact that uh, we have the Africa continental free trade area, you know, I, I want to ask, are we on track with that? Because we seem not to be hearing so much about that anymore. <laughs> How important yeah. is it for us to take advantage of that market, adding it to the Nigerian market? We are, we are not on track. The African administration just appoint new executive secretary uh, of the National Action Committee of AFCFTA. Training has started. Ghana, Rwanda, and a couple of other countries in Africa are already trading. The document to help us with our own processes of export under AFCFTA, I'm aware, has been drafted. There has been one or two stakeholder meeting with private sector. What I'm not sure if the presidency have approved. If the president have approved. So we need to fast track. And, and sincerely, Nigeria is not moving very fast the way we should do under AFCFTA. We are not at all. So I'm assuming because, you know, it was a political season, uh, uh, the government, the people that are supposed to approve are, have other interests they have. Now that we are putting that behind us, I think it should be in the front burner. We are not really on track because we're supposed to be trading by now. And we, we, we don't even have the detail in the public domain of how Nigeria is going to trade. But I know a lot of them have been done, a number of stuff being done by uh, uh, National Action Committee. And, and the good enough, former NDPC director, Awolowo, is the, now the executive secretary. So I think it's a, it's a right fit for that position because you already have a very good experience in NDPC. So he should the ground running, but I'm not sure he's been able to do much, maybe because of the, I mean, transition that we are currently experiencing. But in terms of AFCS, the AFCS is going on. Africa is moving. Nigeria has not joined them. We, we are still trying to catch up. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Dr. Bamitele Ayemipo, uh, lead consultant and chief executive officer, 3T Impact Trade Academy. Thank you so much for talking to us on Business Nigeria. We'll Hello. get there. Let's be optimistic. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>